Okay, so I spent some time ciphering on how I was going to mount these uh, casters onto this frame, and with a little bit of thought, this is what I've come up with. First off, I needed to know how how high up I needed to, uh, or how low down, I guess, depends on your perspective, to mount these casters. And what I did was I took my wheel, or one of my wheels, and positioned it like that. And then I took my tape measure, I measured how high up from this block, from this bearing block, the center, or roughly the center of the wheel was. And looking at this, it's approximately two and three quarters inches from the top. So that means that the bottom of the wheel, or where the wheel is touching the ground, is two and three quarters inches higher than the bottom, or the top of this block, however you want to look at it. So about right there. Now if I took my wheel, or my caster, and I just positioned it like so, as if it was sitting on this, or sitting on top of this uh, bearing block, and I measured its distance, then I find that it is about two and three quarters inches, a little bit less, maybe about a quarter inch less than this. So I just need this to be raised up about a quarter of an inch, roughly. Looking at the height of this block, of this bearing block, it's two and three quarter inches high. An extra quarter inch brings it to three inches, and that's basically how high I need it. I need an extra quarter inch, and that'll bring it to the proper height, and uh, that's basically how high I need it. Now to get to that height, what I need to do is figure out how to, you know, I need something to take it from, you know, basically right about there, roughly. And what I came up with was this. What I'm going to do is I have these two carriage bolts. Now, what I need to do on these, I need to modify these slightly. Now, I'm going to be using hand tools still. A um, little bit specialized. I don't know if you really call it specialized or not. But what I need to do is modif modify these slightly because I need to thread these into these nut certs here so that there's only three inches between the frame and the end of the head or the underside of the head of these carriage bolts. So I need three inches of bolts sticking out once it's uh, threaded in here. So this will be threaded in just like that, three inches, so that what I can do is I can take this piece of wood here and mount it three inches above like this so that whenever I put the caster on, it'll be at the proper height. The only problem with this is, is that this bolt, unfortunately, its thread length, the length of thread that's on it, as you can see, kind of difficult, as you can see, is about a half inch short of three inches. So what I need to do is extend this and bring it out about, th about a half inch, extend the threads. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a, uh, a set of dies, tap and die set, to lengthen that out and uh, do that for both of them. And then I'll probably also, one of the other thing that I found is these threads on these two bolts seem a little rough, so in the process of re-threading them or adding the threads, it'll clean them up. But I'm also going to probably run, run the tap for, you know, these are, interestingly enough, I, I don't know, I got a lot of this hardware, I guess. These are all quarter inch 20s, uh, just like 
virtually everything else that's on here. I've done almost everything is quarter inch 20 hardware. And I'm thinking about maybe standardizing on that. <laughs> Not sure. But uh, I need to clean up the threads of these nut certs because as I was threading this through in here, it had some sticking parts. And the other thing I need to do is because these are carriage bolts and I have to thread these in, and one thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add these spacers. I'm going to, I'm going to make cut two three inch sections on this and use the, use this square. It's square aluminum tubing. It's like one inch, one inch square aluminum tubing. You want to cut two three inch spacers because this, uh, this needs to be supported so that it doesn't slide up the smooth surface of the carriage bolt. So I'm going to put two spacers made out of this aluminum tubing on either side here. But I need to be able to essentially thread this into the nut cert all the way through. Now, once it gets down against the spacer in the wood, there's, I, I won't be able to turn it anymore by, by hand or any other method because, again, these are carriage bolts. What a carriage bolt is, is it's essentially something, you know, it's one of the, it's these, but usually a carriage bolt will have, not always, but usually it will have a smooth section, a threaded section, it could be all threaded, and then it has a smooth head. Because what these are meant to do, and if you look at it, you can see that the uh, underside there is kind of square. See that? And what these are meant to do is you're supposed to put them into your material you know, like a post or, you know, something like that, and then put a bolt, or not a bolt, a nut, and thread it against the other side and draw this against the other piece of material to hold everything together. And it's kind of like almost like a blind process where you don't have to worry about having something to hold this in order to keep it from turning because the square part bites in and keeps things from turning. So... Because I can't do that and I need to turn the head, what I'm going to also have to do is I'm going to have to, is I'm going to, have to basically use a, use a file and a hacksaw to cut a slot into the head of this uh, carriage bolt so I can use a screwdriver to turn it, essentially. Um, just something basic like that. It won't look pretty, but it's going to be facing down, and so nobody's going to see it. And this is junk botics. <laughs> you know, we don't care if things look junky. Uh, in fact, that's that's the aesthetic of things, I think. Um, so I'm going to get get to get to the uh, first thing I want to do is I want to I want to uh, thread this bolt down because, well, number one, I'm you know I'm pretty sure I'll I'm pretty sure I'll be able to do that with with this. I don't think the shoulder the shoulder or the smooth part they call that the shoulder of the bolt is too thick to thread. I think it'll cut just fine, but. If it doesn't, then I don't want to go and be modifying everything else um, before I know that this is going to work. Um, because otherwise, well, I'll have to take a different tack on something. I'm not sure what. Um, I do have some. I do have what I believe is a piece of all thread over there that's a quarter inch twenty. Um, might be able to use that, or well, I don't know what I'll what I'll have to do at that point. But uh, we'll get to it and uh, continue on from there. Oh, and the other thing is, is uh, last, last, uh, last night I uh, put in, uh, I put in the, uh, the grommets for the wires. Uh, just went ahead and did that real quick. Uh, drilled out some holes and popped in my rubber grommets so don't have to worry about wires uh, getting cut by the uh, sheet, sheet aluminum. Um, so yeah, just gonna go and continue with that. So I'm just over here uh, attempting to add some new threads to this uh, carriage bolt. And so far it's going okay, but I'm still on the uh, regular threads and I'm just using my standard 3-in-1 motor oil as my thread cutting lubricant, which works actually pretty good. It's a, it's a pretty good lubricant. Okay, now I'm at the end of the threads. And this is where it's going to just be kind of slow. 
Just got to do a little bit at a time, rotate a little bit into the metal and back it off to get the shavings out. But it's actually cutting pretty good. So and this uh, this this uh, tap and die set I have is just something I picked up at Harbor Freight. Relatively inexpensive. I've got one that's uh, for uh, American Standard or SAE and uh, another separate set that's for metric. Very inexpensive, well worth getting. I don't use it very often, but when I need it, it's been very handy. Okay, well I'm just going to continue with this, uh, with this process, and uh, then I'll be right back. Alright, so it's been, a, been actually quite a while, little while since, but you can see that I've uh, added a half inch um, of uh, extra thread there. So, uh, you know, it's... Uh, it's a long process, hand uh, hand threading or doing you know tap and die work by hand. Uh, it'd be a lot easier if I had a lathe, but uh, I don't. Um, but all you need is just a you know just a simple simple set of uh, set of uh, tap and dies, relatively inexpensive. I don't think I paid more than 25 bucks for these. And uh, a vise and something to hold the vise down with. And something else I had discovered while I was doing this is, well, keeping this thing from turning. Because that vise is a, it's a drill press vise, but it has a, it has a smooth surface. And, uh, and uh, this uh, smooth shaft or a smooth shoulder of this uh, carriage bolt wanted to turn in it. So... What I ended up doing was actually lifting the carriage bolt up and clamping it to the square part, and uh, that prevented it to turn from turning. But you got to apply a lot of torque on this to get the to get the uh, die down. Uh, you know, just basically an eighth of a turn, and then back it off a quarter, go back around another eighth, back it off a quarter. Just got to keep doing that to break the chips and uh, advance essentially. So, but uh, you know, it. Uh, all goes <laughs> goes all the way down the threads it's uh this is perfect so i just got to do one more and then we can then i can uh, continue on with uh, everything else <laughs> okay so uh i have uh, both uh, screws or both bolts finally done um got them fully uh fully threaded and got some uh regular uh, screwdriver uh, heads sawed into them. Almost looked like they were manufactured that way. But uh, yeah, now, uh, now I can go ahead with the rest, which is, uh, well, I gotta, I gotta, gotta cut that wood down, um, that, wood, that wood piece, and uh, also cut those, uh, cut those uh, pieces of, um, Aluminum down um, for the spacers. Uh, one thing that I did notice that I did notice uh, as I was remeasuring is that rather than three inches, I actually needed it to be two and three quarters inches, um, and uh, so I adjusted things for that. Not really that big of a deal. So let me uh, get to the uh, doing the spacers and uh, move on from there. Okay, so I almost have everything ready for uh, putting the casters on. Right now I'm uh, just uh, in the middle of uh, drilling the uh, piece of wood. I've already cut it to uh, length, uh, to the length I needed. 
And I also uh, created uh, these two uh, spacers out of the aluminum, of the aluminum tubing. So uh, those are all ready. Just gotta gotta get this uh, drilled out. Ain't gonna take much at all. Let's see, quarter inch. Wanna make sure that it's uh. Make sure that it's uh, you know vertical. It's not deviating in any direction. Level. All right. Well, that was easy. Backside probably doesn't look too good, but eh, it's all right. Okay, so. Get our, uh, get our screw here, test fit it, yep, goes through pretty good. So, so there you go, there's our, uh, there's our uh, wood piece. Now we're just going to have to assemble it. So, I'm going to get things uh, set up for that, we'll do that. Alright, well I got things uh, set up to uh, put this, uh, Put this uh, caster holder plate thing, whatever you want to call it, on. And what I'm doing right now is I've got this uh, handheld uh, chamfering uh, bit thing. Uh, it's used for, if you had uh, countersink screws, it's uh, used for creating the countersink uh, by hand. Uh, you can also buy uh, you can also buy a a bit that'll go into like a drill or a cordless screwdriver that can do the same, but uh, sometimes I like uh, having the control of just a hand, and this is really useful for also deburring holes in aluminum and uh, plastic and everything else. So uh, kind of a useful there. So I'm just uh, doing this on this uh, on this wood piece. To give a little bit of uh, space for the um, for that square part on the carriage bolts, um, otherwise they'll kind of like stick up a little bit, and it'll also be kind of difficult to uh, to uh, screw them into place. So there we go. You can see uh, you can see how easy that uh, that was, and you can see what the difference in this extra hole from that used to be. Well, I don't know what this used to be, but it used to be a piece of wood I had, and it had these extra holes in it. And I reused one over here, but had to drill another one for over here. So, we'll go ahead and take these. Take uh, one of our screws, or bolts, put it down in there. Do the same on the other side. Put our uh, spacer. that sit there. Do the same on the other side. And then we can just uh, start to screw it down. Alright, there's one. And there goes the other. So I'm going to continue to get this uh, completely mounted. It's going to take a while. But once I get it done, then uh, then I'll, uh, well, I don't know, go from there. Okay, so uh, here we have the caster mounting plate mounted. Just got it right there. Now all we have to do is uh, get the uh, casters mounted onto it. <laughs> and uh, what I'll be doing is I'll probably, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna basically transfer these holes probably, I'm not sure where I'm gonna put them, probably, probably somewhere like that. Just right on the inside. And uh, 
drill out draw some holes and uh, get some small bolts and bolt it bolt it together so um, let me get on to that and I'll be back to show you what all that looks like okay so uh, <clears throat> here's the uh, here's the finished uh, well more or less finished I don't have the rear wheels on but uh, got the casters mounted and everything everything all mounted up see I used uh, some small bolts and got some uh, got four bolts on each one small things and then uh, the other thing is you can also see up here those uh, things right there is uh, the grommets so uh, yeah the only other thing that probably should be done but uh, is not like super desperate at this point is to shorten those bolts down those are the uh, extended bolts that I created and they should be uh, probably shortened down to I'll uh, take about an inch inch and a quarter off or something like that and uh, you know make them look a little bit nicer <laughs> but uh, other than that that's uh, that's pretty much it Okay, well that's what it looks like uh, with the wheels on. Um, I don't, uh, they're not uh, permanently attached right now. I don't have the clips on or the uh, hose clamps holding them on, but uh, it gives a good idea of what it, what it looks like whenever, uh, whenever it's, well, whenever we get it fully operational. I'm gonna put a battery in the back, uh, right there between those four, uh, those four screws behind the rear, rear wheels behind those uh, four uh, bolt heads behind the rear wheels and that bar be able to put a well I think what I'm gonna probably end up doing at least at first is one of those uh, 7 amp hour or 12 volt uh, gel cells um, should give me plenty of uh, plenty of run time and plenty of current uh, capability for for this base um, but uh, that'll be in a that'll be in a future video <laughs> so uh, that's, uh, yeah, that's it right there. That's the base. So that's how you build the chassis. So as you can see, it can be easy to build a robot chassis, like this one for a follow me robot, using nothing more than mostly basic tools. While your own robot may be more complex when it comes to its own chassis design, the same kind of tools and techniques can be used to build it.